drunken pork loin. We have the oven preheating to 300. We're browning it on the stovetop. It's stuffed, literally stuffed with garlic. We'll get back to this in a minute. And we're going to cook that low and slow with a splash of grappa and red wine. You could use white wine too, perfectly fine. When we get it beautiful like this, now when you buy a pork loin, that's what this is, a pork loin roast, it's a pork loin roast, you can ask the butcher to tie it for you, but your, the weight of your roast will vary. Not every pork loin will be the same size and shape, right? But it's very simple how we prepared this to start. It's tied, the butcher can do that for you, you can do it yourself, no big deal. It's tied up to keep it nice and tight and together. And you make several slits all over it. You can see how it's studded. It looks like an armadillo, kind of. And it has a whole bulb, an entire bulb of garlic stuffed in and around it. And it's covered with salt and pepper and a little nutmeg. And we're gonna put some nutmeg and some fruit that we're gonna saute to serve with the pork as well. So, next we're going to add, and we added a little bit of olive oil and butter, as I said. Now we're gonna add a splash of grappa or brandy. And then we're going to add half a bottle of wine. <laughs> Looks good. And two large fresh bay leaves, okay? And now we need our lid. So we're gonna pop this guy into the oven and let him get to work. Of course, we have one working in the back. So now we're moving on to the fruit that we can serve with our drunken roast pork. I have about a half a stick of butter and a little olive oil in the skillet. And I've got, oh, three or four apples and a few pears, okay? You don't want this to turn into sauce. So I leave the apples and pears kind of big and chunky sized and I just lightly browned them in the butter and olive oil, right? And you set them in there, the pears I left in halves, and you just set them in there cut side down in the case of the pears and try and nestle as many of them as you can into a cast iron or nonstick pan. I throw in a few sprigs of thyme a little salt. And depending on the fruit and how bitter you, you chose the apple, you can add a sprinkle of, of sugar, but I don't think it needs it, quite frankly. Uh, but I can't see you, do whatever you want. <laughs> um, and I add a little bit of nutmeg, I mean, to so much stuff around the holidays especially. To pepper or not pepper is up to you. A little pinch of pepper in there is quite delicious, actually. But if you're like, oh man, it's weird, that's fruit, I don't want pepper in there. All right, fine, don't. Again, I can't see you. <laughs> At the very end, we're gonna add a squish of lemon. This is the pork we had working in the back. This is the jus from the pan. You can add a little bit of store-bought or homemade stock or bone broth, right, also, to just loosen up all of the drippings when the pork comes out of the oven. And you can see all the garlic that studded the entire roast, right? And now we're going to take all of the sauteed fruit and put that over and around. <laughs> Spilling all over the platter. So, so easy, so absolutely nothing. And so yummy, like so pretty. Cray cray.